So this video lesson is the first part of two video lessons that are going to be all about what's known as scientific notation. Um, and in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to build up the idea of what scientific notation is. We are going to talk about one of two different things that we can do with scientific notation, why we might use it, um, and then, of course, get to some practice problems at the end. So first, I want, to, want you to think about some really, really, really big numbers. And in particular, I'm going to think about a big number that has uh, kind of a fun name and is one of the more famous big numbers, and that's called a Google. Now, a Google is 1 followed by 100 zeros. Make sure you can see it in there. 100 zeros. So if you wanted to go through, I don't recommend you do it. You'll have to trust me on this one. But you go through, you'll find we have 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, etc. This really is 1 followed by 100 zeros. This number is called Google. G-O-O-G-O-L, not to be confused with the search engine, G-O-O-G-L-E. Um, so with this number that we have here, this would take a very, very long time to write. It took a long time for me to type, um, but it would take a very, very long time to write. So we have some big numbers that we might want to find some easier ways of representing a Google than the number that you see here, or just merely saying it's one followed by 100 zeros because that's a pretty long way of explaining simple number. Um, so I'm going to go look back and actually review something from powers and exponents um, that is actually going to relate to scientific notation. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and evaluate these three expressions. A being 3 and 15 hundredths times 10 to the first, 3 and 15 hundredths times 10 to the second for B, and 3 and 15 hundredths times 10 to the third. And I want you to not only evaluate these expressions, but make an observation about what happens to each as the power on our 10 increases. So first, the order of operations tells us that we need to evaluate this power. So let's start with A, 3.15 times 10. That's just 10 to the first. 10 to the first is 10. When we go through and actually do this multiplication, we get 5, or rather 0 first. 5, 1, 3, two decimal points. 3 and 15 hundredths times 10 is 31.5. Now, let's look at 3.15 times 10 to the second. Well, we know that we have to do the power first. So I'll write it over here in red. 10 to the second power is just 10 times 10, which is 100. So we have 3 and 15 hundredths times 100. Now if we multiply that by 100, we have to add our two zeros to start off with, and 5, 1, 3, two decimal points. So 3.15 times 10 to the second is actually 315. And finally, for letter C, 3 and 15 hundredths times 10 to the third. 10 to the third is just 10 times 10 times 10 times, times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So 3.15 times 1,000, 0, 0, 0, 5, 1, 3, from the right to the left, two decimal places, gives this an evaluation of 3,150. So now hopefully you were able to make an observation about what this was. If you haven't gotten to make an observation about it yet, about how these three um, answers to our problems, 31.5, 315, and 3150 are all related to each other, compared and contrasted, and um, perhaps something else that you notice about when our exponent for our powers changes. Um, and then think about this question here. Describe in words what happens to the decimal point in numbers when you multiply the decimal by a power of 10. Um, go ahead and think about that now. If you haven't gotten a chance to think about it or write it down, do that now and come back to the lesson. Well, there are a number of different observations you could have made about how the powers affect uh, the numbers that we're talking about, uh, but particularly... Uh, such things as they didn't 
change the digits of the number, 3 and 1500, so you still kept the digits 3, 1, and 5, uh, but you moved to the decimal point, and you make the observation that the higher the power of 10, the more the decimal point moves. For a single power of 10, uh, 10 to the first, it just moves the decimal point by one place. For 10 to the second, it moves the decimal point by two places. For 10 to the third, it moves the decimal point by three places. And so on and so forth, and that is actually a pattern of what occurs, and we'll get to that in just a second. So now, you don't have to pause the video, but I want you to think to yourself, why could this be helpful for writing out very, very, very large numbers? We already talked about what happens to the decimal point when we multiply by powers of 10. It looked like 3.15 times 10 to the first, it moved one decimal place, became 31.5. I'm just repeating the things that we saw on the last slide. 3.15 times 10 to the second, moved it one, two decimal places, became 315. 3.15 times 10 to the third is 3150 because it moved it one, two, three decimal places. Um, and go through that. That's what happens to the decimal points when we multiply numbers by powers of 10. So why would that be helpful for writing out very, very large numbers? Well. For these sorts of examples where the numbers are small, it's easy to write out 2,150, and a bit more complicated to write out 3.15 times 10 to the third. But if we had a number that was very, very large, say 10, 12, 14, 18, 100 digits long, then being able to write it in something as short as this, perhaps, will make it easier and more compact. Think back to our Google. 1 followed by 100 zeros. I don't often, or really ever, want to have to write out 1 followed by 100 zeros, so if we had a way to make this smaller, that would be fantastic. So that is the whole concept behind what we use what's called scientific notation for. And all scientific notation is, it's a way of writing very large numbers to save both time and space. And the rules for it are right here. All numbers written in scientific notation have the same form. Now this is in going to include some variables and some algebra for you. Um, this letter C represents a number that is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So it can go from 1, which it can be, all the way up to 10. C cannot be 10, but it can go all the way up as close as you want to make it to 10. So it's just that number, between 1 and 10, multiplied by some power of 10. But N has to be a whole number. At the very least, for right now, we're not familiar with powers that aren't a whole number. We know how to expand powers and exponents when we have positive numbers. Uh, perhaps uh, this year we'll learn how to do it with negative numbers also. But we don't know what to do with it if it's a fraction, a decimal, anything like that. And we can work with it, but for right now and for the entirety of scientific notation, scientific notation only makes sense when n is a whole number. So this is the idea behind scientific notation. Now, it's a little bit complex to look at right now, so let's look at some examples of what we'll do today, which is just expanding it from what we call scientific notation into what we often call standard form. Now, standard form is just a way that you're familiar with looking at a number. So let's go through an example here a few of these different examples to how to convert from scientific notation to standard form, how to look at it and understand it. Now for each of these numbers here, all we did was change the power of 10. Our C, our number being multiplied that's not a power of 10, is between 1 and 10. It's 1 and 537 uh, ten thousandths. Nope, rather thousands. 537 thousandths, not ten thousandths. So that's true, um, which is what we needed for scientific notation, that we have a whole number power. So now we're going to multiply 1.537 times 10 squared. Now let's actually do out this multiplication. 10 squared is 10 times 10, which gives you 100. 100 here. Now this is a very easy multiplication. Drop down a few zeros. 7, 3, 5, 1. And now we have 1, 2, 3 decimal places because we're familiar with decimal multiplication. 1, 2, 3. And our answer becomes 153 and 7 tenths. I also want you to look at what happens 
if we take 1.537 and just move the decimal point two places, like the power on our 10 suggests. In that case, we also get 153.7. Let's look at another example of that, this time in blue. 1.537 times 10 to the third. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So 1 and 537 thousandths times 1,000. 0, 0, 0, 7, 3, 5, 1 from right to left. And 1, 2, 3 decimal places. 1, 2, 3 gives you a product of 1,537. Now this is a number in what we said was standard form. One that doesn't have powers of 10 attached to it. It's just a number. Could be a decimal, could be a fraction, could be um, a whole number. Well, I guess particularly whole numbers and decimals, not the fractions. But this is called standard form. Now, what also happens when we take 1.537 and move that decimal place three places? One, two, three to the right, because it's getting bigger. And we also get 1,537. And hopefully by this point you can recognize this pattern that that is actually what happens. All we need to do to evaluate a scientific notation is take the number that we originally have, let's look at it in red now, for 1.537 times 10 to the fourth. And we'll go back and we'll double check that 1.537 times 10,000 actually does work with this. Um, but if we take this idea, we move the decimal point four places, one, two, three, four, to get to the zero, we end up with 15,370. And that is actually what we get when we multiply 1.537 times 10,000, which is what 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 really is. Uh, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 7, 3, 5, 1 from right to left, 1, 2, 3 decimal places, 15,370. And finally, in um, green this time, 1.537 times 10 to the 6, 1, 2, 3. Now we have three more places to go, so we need to add three more zeros to the end. Because after all, we can add as many zeros to the end of a decimal number as we want. Um, and we get 1,537,000. So, take this idea, either multiplying by the expanded power of 10, or just moving the decimal and see what you can do about evaluating these four scientific notations. 3 and 9600 times 10 to the third, which we'll call number one. Number two, seven and 21 thousandths times 10 to the first. Uh, number three, one and 73 ten thousandths times 10 to the seventh. And four and 855 thousandths times 10 to the fourth for number four. So, if we look at number one, we'll go through number one and number two by multiplying through by the powers of ten. Um, and then for number three and number four, we'll just move the decimal point. Uh, but we'll show both for one and two. So, three and ninety-six hundredths. And now we want ten to the third. So, ten times ten times ten gives you one thousand. Three zeros. And then from right to left, six, nine, three. Because, of course, we multiply from right to left. Two decimal places, one, two, and we end up with 3,960, or 3.96, move the decimal place three places, and also end up with 3,960. For number two, seven and 21 thousandths times 10 to the first. So seven and 21 thousandths times 10 to the first, which is just 10. That makes our writing of the power of 10 multiplication easier. 0, and then from right to left, again, 1, 2, 0, oh, 7. Three decimal places, 1, 2, 3, and we get 70 and 21 hundredths. Again, if we looked at it, by just moving the decimal point, the number of places prescribed in the power, then we would also just have 70 and 21 hundredths. Now, number 3 and number 4, we could go through, and if you went through and multiplied by the expanded powers of 10 as a double check, that's fantastic, uh, as a double check, but we're just going to go through number 3 and number 4 by moving the decimal point. So 1 and 73 ten thousandths, we need to move the decimal place 7 places, and it's getting bigger, 
is 10 to the 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our answer is actually 10, 0, 0, 7, 3, 0, 0, 0. Put the commas in to make it easier to read. 10,073,000. That's quite a big number. And number 4, uh, we'll do this one in yellow. 4.855 times 10 to the 4th. 4.855. 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places gives us 48,550. So as a brief review, scientific notation is just a way that we can compactly and easily write very large numbers. Everything in scientific notation has the same kind of format, where it's a number between 1 and 10, in this case mark C, multiplied by a power of 10. And what we looked at today in the video lesson was taking that number and expanding it from scientific notation into a form that we're more familiar with called standard form. Now the next few video lessons we'll talk about going from standard form back to scientific notation, which is a little bit uh, more difficult potentially, um, but first just worry about being able to convert from scientific notation to standard form, um, and we will move on in the next video lesson from there.